Time to go at it again. This one's going to be heavy. This is the heavy hitter. What we're going to talk about today is the probationary employees, hospital police director, assistant deputy director at the time, and their violations of New York State HIPAA law. This, these violations occurred at a meeting with himself and hospital police supervision the topic was about an officer who suffers from mm. you can say it's an illness keloid <laughs> what what occurred is is the director made a derogatory remark now you do know that throughout the medical facilities in the city and i'm quite sure the state of new york they have postings that says you cannot talk about patients medical conditions at all it's stated it's posted all over the building it's mandatory we have classes on this every year more than once, quite fluently to be exact. So, for this director to take action and say at said meeting, I don't want that officer to work at PEDS 6300 or PEDS ER because he looked like a fucking monster with that shit on the side of his face. <laughs> well, <laughs> Said remark <laughs> offended the hospital, hospital police captain. And, and from what I was told, his, his response was, you can't say that. You can't say that. And he said, oh, really? <laughs> I'm in charge here. Okay? And I'm saying I don't want him working in these areas okay he said I only want him working this Park Avenue gate on overtime so he said the captain replied that's discrimination you can't do that he said like I said I'm in charge here so the captain says okay not a problem he took it uh, into hand and contacted the proper individuals in reference to this matter because it was a violation of the corporate compliance policy. Uh, unannounced to the dirty director, the officer was in, in basically talking with his supervisor, his immediate supervisor, who had a medical condition done. He went to a doctor, a specialist, and had a medical procedure done. And the, sergeant, the officer questioned the supervisor, and the supervisor said, yeah, I go here. And he said, you should check him out. So the supervisor pulls out the card, which is his, which is his appointment card, and gives it to the officer. The officer went and had the procedure done. Great surgeon also as well. To be exact, he's a professor, I believe at NYU. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing at the experience. <laughs> he was a great experience there. But let's move forward. Um, the director didn't know that the officer had gotten information to take care of his medical situation. 
yet he just lost it. So by the time this occurred, the uh, procedures had started. But yet and still, the captain had to, and based on uh, administration, had to inform the officer of his rights to file a complaint. The captain came to the officer's post and said, I am ordered to tell you this. And he told the officer, and the officer said, well, it's okay, I, I have the procedure done. And the captain said, I understand that. But I have to tell you, you have a right to file a complaint. So the complaint was filed <laughs> with the facility's EEO or acting EEO. Uh, and they took the information <laughs> and basically just flushed it. Basically, just flushed it. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible how they flushed the first incident and then they flushed the second incident. Okay, because labor relations, upon another hearing with, which occurred in April, the officer said uh, two major complaints was filed with the EEO. So once these complaints were filed with the EEO, uh, with the one, with the first one being violation of of federal law, state law, and possibly even local laws, the uh, labor relations department was supposed to cease and desist. They were supposed to stand down, but they didn't. So. We go to the point of where there's a at said hearing at labor relations, you're telling them, and there was a, a, a union rep, a female union rep, who was there, and what was said, she lost it. She lost. She said, you can't say that. You can't say that. That's discrimination. You can't do that. The labor relations specialists still continue with the meeting. Even after the officer said that, you know, a complaint was filed with the EEO, the facility's EEO. It would have been in the best interest for the uh, labor relations specialist to stop, pick up the phone or go outside, pick up the phone, call downstairs, and ask if this was was the complaints filed. And then come back and say, you know what? We're gonna put this on hold until an investigation is done. As, as, as far as the corporate compliance officer being, uh, official being informed, and then moving on from there. Based on the fact that the, that the uh, officer is a permanent employee under civil service but yet and still they said no nah, we're going to run our regular routine and do what we do so everything was basically tossed under the rug and we're going to move forward this is unbelievable this is totally unbelievable uh we're gonna leave it on the fact of just just the, just that fact of what occurred. No, we're gonna go further. <laughs> we're gonna to go to the fact that after the officer was informed, the dirty the, the probationary <laughs> uh, hospital police director caught the officer one night as he was coming in to work. He caught him. And as the officer came out of the, the uh, locker room, he tells the officer, you're with me. And he takes the officer into hospital police administration and into his office. As he's doing this, the officer says, is anyone else coming? You know, because of the simple fact that we'd be best to have 
someone there to witness what's going on. You know there's bad water between these guys, no matter what. You get someone else there so it wouldn't fly off the handle. But yet still, we're going to move forward. So once you get inside the director's office, the director said, has anyone come to you and told you about a remark that I said about you? The officer said, well, what was the remark that was said? He said, no, I just need to know, did anyone come to you and tell you? Once again, what was the, the remark that was said? The director then changed it and said, you know, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I'll find out who it is. But um, you're different, you're different. You have experience from others. I said, yes, I came from other law enforcement. And they said, you know, these guys on, on, on the night, these supervisors on the night tour, I need you to help them out because they don't know what they're doing. Really. He's like, you need to think about becoming sergeant. And I said, yeah, I took the test. Unfortunately, at the, the time I took the test, I was tired. I was falling asleep. But I took the test, and I failed. But the next time it comes around, I'm going to take the test again. I'm quite sure I'll pass. Which I did. <laughs> so, moving forward, uh, he says, no, you need to really think about becoming sergeant. You know, it's available. You need to really think about it. Are you out of your mind? Are you in? I, I didn't say it to him, but are you out of your mind? Are you indirectly offering me a sergeant's position and I'm a civil servant employee? Isn't that bribery? To take such a position and try to hold it while a civil service list is out and it has to be filled by civil service employees. What type of nonsense is that? That's bribery. If I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it because I passed it, which I did pass later on. But no, no thank you, not that way. So, in closing, As I left the, as the officer left the hospital police administration and left his office as well, he said, just as he walked out, you need to really think about it. Not a problem. I'm going to think about it. Thought about it so well. Got upstairs to the 124. And who happened to be on the 124 desk? <laughs> the union rep. Uh, what would that be? The shop steward. Told the shop steward to step outside, had some information to tell him. Told the shop steward, in the presence of another officer, half pint, <laughs> what occurred? Down in the hospital police administration in his office. The shop steward gave me a directive right there. To write it in my memo book. And I did. It's recorded in the memo book. So we look at the fact that everything's recorded, but yet when I had the hearing or when when I went and reported to the labor relations director. She blew it off as well. This is ongoing harassment. It started in 2008. And ended in 2010. There are so many laws that were broken by those involved. It's ridiculous. It is totally ridiculous. This is something where the Public Integrity Bureau should have been involved in a long time ago. No civil servant should have to go through anything like this. Yet, about that remedy, 
Do we have to go into the law in reference to that rim reading? I think that'll be the next one. So, we done reached the limit. On this note, you know what it is. The facts cannot be altered nor denied. Y'all have a wonderful day. And I'm gone.